Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. And, and I want to thank all of our um, witnesses here for their testimony. Uh, as a former director of the Iowa Department of Public Health, I'm deeply appreciative for the work that all of you do. So not only a physician, but a former director. And in fact, I spoke on the floor of Congress in criticism of the latest COVID relief uh, bill that passed because less than one half of 1% of the total $1.9 trillion funding went to public health workforce. Uh, and it could have gone to public health workforce and non-competitive uh, grants to local public health workforce, of which in Iowa there are 101 local public health uh, workforces, uh, county departments who did amazing work during the pandemic. Uh, as we all know, the coronavirus crisis presented a unique and profound challenge for our healthcare communities. The impact of the economic lockdowns and school closures had on our economy and general well-being cannot be understated as well. Uh, in fact, the World Health Organization found that government-imposed lockdowns can have a profound impact on individuals, communities, and societies by bringing social and economic life to a near stop. And this is especially true for our artery-vulnerable groups. Last April, I wrote an article about the impact of the lockdowns that would have on excess deaths from cardiovascular events, from untreated uh, cancers, undetected cancers, cancers that were not continuing on their treatment use from increased drug use, addiction, and overdose, and from increased anxiety, depression, and unfortunately, suicide. Uh, the United Nations Children's Fund has estimated that these lockdowns increase childhood poverty rate by 15 percent. Additionally, mental health problems are up 31 percent. Drug use and addiction resulting in overdose have exploded. San, San Francisco Chronicle uh, relayed in January of this year published that deaths in the 18 to 45-year-old age group by drug overdoses far exceeded deaths in that age group from COVID-19. And children as young as nine have committed suicide. How we have responded to reopening our economy and getting back to normal is also troublesome to me and presents a challenge for the healthcare sector specifically. Dr. McKinney, Dr. Roberts, and Dr. Cantor, all three of you mentioned in your written testimony issues with turnover and the struggle to recruit and retain healthcare workers. Meanwhile, we see an administration pushing for vaccine mandates among these very populations. These are the brave men and women who worked tirelessly, and many of you in your local departments have worked tire tirelessly over a year through the pandemic with no vaccine to care for our country. This seems a little bit hypocritical to me that these healthcare professionals receive a vaccine after fighting this virus for 18 months and have the wherewithal and knowledge to understand and make an informed decision. So I'd like to ask all of you, do you believe that we should be recognizing immunity as the broad base of immunity that we know in public health, which is immunity either acquired from an infection or um, from a vaccine? So if you would each keep your um, answers brief, do we acknowledge that and recognize that there is immunity? Should we be talking about immunity and immunity whether it's acquired through infection or natural immunity or acquired through vaccine. Uh, Dr. Resnick. I'm not a virologist, but I do want to uh, offer a statement that uh, a quote from Dr. David Thomas, chief of the Hopkins Division of Infectious Diseases, who stated that I would advise persons previously infected to consider adding vaccination if they haven't already received it. SARS-CoV-2 infection can kill and produce long-term side effects that no one wants. Vaccination remains the best way to be protected without experiencing the risk of infection. Well, I would say the recent studies that have come out from Israel do, in fact, highlight um, the uh, broad-based immunity uh, of uh, naturalized infection. No one is suggesting that people go out and get infected or have a COVID-19 party like chickenpox. So, um, um, Dr. McKinney? Yes, yes or no? I would be happy to happy to answer. Um, in in response to the Israel um, study, um, we are all very anxious to see more more data come out um, in in various studies. Um, with that, the risk of getting natural immunity, like you mentioned, is so high. We've seen the we've seen the consequences of COVID. So Again, I'm not asking about the risk. I'm asking yeah. about should we be talking about immunity as a broad based immunity, like we do for any other infectious diseases? None of us want people to go out and deliberately get infected. So thank you for that, Dr. Roberts. 
Thank you for the question. I would just add, as you mentioned before, that for um, vaccine mandates are very common in the healthcare sector. And for many of those, we do allow a um, natural immunity as an option if they can prove that. Thank you so much. And I, in fact, have a bill that uh, asks that we mandate uh, insurance coverage for testing for antibodies and T-cell antibodies so we can show proof of immunity. And then Dr. Cantor. Yeah, thanks, Rep. Miller Meeks. And I respect you as a colleague, both as a doc and a state health officer, a former health officer. I, I, I agree. I think there needs to be more discussion. The data out there is um, somewhat inconclusive. Um, the Maccabee data, I think, has some selection bias issues. There's compelling data from Kentucky and Alabama that shows that natural protection from an infection is somewhat unpredictable. About a third of people that get natural infection might not mount an antibody response. There are also other viruses that we still vaccinate people for after they have an infection like varicella. So I think it's complex, um, but I advise my patients who had COVID-19 infection that they get more protection if they go and get vaccinated after that. So I think uh, testing for uh, the immune response would be a very valuable uh, piece of information in that data. So thank you, and I yield back my time.